Last time on Tales of Arise. Oh wow, what's going on? Take care of yourself. Okay, Doe? So someone else calls him a nickname! Dodo! I call him Dodo, but still, like, Doe is a good nickname. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. I won't. Forgive me. I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I hope it all works out. Thank you. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens. Greetings, my beautiful viewers! I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome back to Tales of Arise! Oh, boy. So last time we got to Lenegas, found out that, um, the people of Lenegas, like the Renans who live there, may be, in a way, um, well, they are being oppressed differently than the Danans. But they are being oppressed by, like, not having information. Are being taught their whole lives, basically, what they should know and what they shouldn't know. And, you know, uh, you know, we've, we've resolved to try and, like, help them and everything while also, of course, getting independence for Dana. But more than that, um, we found out about Dohalim's past and a little bit of that got resolved and that's good. And, um, now we're heading off to find the truth of the thorns and, um, of the Sovereign and the Maiden. That's what we're doing next. Soon, you might very well learn the truth behind Xion's thorns. As well as my own past, I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens. The only way is forward. I'm determined to save Xion and Dana. Nothing I learn can change that. Yeah, that's a that's a red flag right there. Nothing I learned can change that. They have to die in order for Janet. Uh, yeah, she has to die in order for Janet to be saved. God damn it! <laughs> Hold up, you guys. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure, we can check it out. All right, let's see. This looks like some kind of research facility. Yeah. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Yeah. Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. Hmm, the Forbidden Zone. It's the people of Lenegas. Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. Grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No. What we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose. And why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. I think I can make this work. I love Dodo. Well, 
Can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records, by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Danon astral energy, so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure, taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. Yeah. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Yeah! Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. Yeah. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> they re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Yeah, they did. Alphen. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Volron. Yep. Volron? But that means... She's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. Damn. <laughs> but what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. Yeah. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The Crown Contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. Yeah. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown Contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a Sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, Someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. Well, yeah, but for, for 300 years? I mean, who the hell would that be? The Red Woman? I mean, possibly. It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. Yeah. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. 
What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. Damn. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can while we're here. I'll do that. Hmm. All right. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign, and Volron as well. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey, it looks like the terminals in here turned on too. We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Indeed. Toying with lives. Only two Sovereigns in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it. Just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it. Before you ever got that far. <sighs> Wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. Yeah. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <sighs> I think I'll be okay now. Oh, that was nice. Topic to explore. The Sovereign. Sovereign acts as Lenigus' uh, uh, central control device uh, for the spirit channeling ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Danish subject serves as the base of its creation. In theory, ideal candidates possess equal affinity for every astral energy. Oh! However, such aptitude is statistically rare to uncover uh, within real-world conditions. As a result, most subjects die during the adjustment period, and stability is uh, still not guaranteed for those who survive it. This instability, coupled with the Sovereign's powers of astral manipulation, pose a high risk to the security of Lenigus if left unchecked. As such, stabilization me measures must be put in place via the uh, support mechanism when utilizing the Sovereign in the spirit channeling ceremony. Addendum 1. No effective alternate methods to perform the ceremony have been found. Trials on Danon subjects are authorized to continue. Hmm. Addendum 2. Unit 2 adjustments are a success. Subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extended observations take place. Okay. That's all for the Sovereign. The Maiden, then. Maiden acts as the Sovereign's support mechanism for the spirit channeling ceremony. Okay. A Renner subject serves as its functions providing the Sovereign with supplemental dark astral energy it lacks in tandem with the Renis Alma. Oh! So whoever the Sovereign is has affinity for all the elements except for the dark astral energy, which is only found on Rena, and therefore they have to use the Renis Alma to channel it. That makes sense. During the ceremony, it is partially, uh, is partly responsible for astral energy, uh, conservation as well as maintaining stability over the sovereign's own powers additionally the degree of intimacy between it and the sovereign have been observed to positively impact the level of stability in both subjects because of this uh trial activations of the sovereign without the maiden present are expressly forbidden furthermore neither the sovereign nor the maiden are to be informed about the uh details of the spirit channeling plan Addendum 1. Mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed the cause of past Sovereign's ram... Uh, rampacy. Countermeasures must be considered. Addendum 2. In line with plan adjustments, the current subject will have its Maiden registration revoked and returned to its original household. That must be Naori! So she went back to her regular house after she got Alphen back to Dana? Lords, 
Each Kronton test, five of the best qualified members of the Renan populace are chosen to act as lords, vying to serve as the next sovereign. During this tenure, they are granted level 3 authority, as well as one of five elemental realms to uh, administer, and its corresponding master core. They are also assigned an ID crest indicating their designated element. The selection process is based only on astral uh, artistry and physical and mental aptitude. Other variables such as age have no bearing whatsoever. Because only the strongest go on to become lords, the position itself does not inherently make an individual any stronger. It should be noted, however, that the lords are not the only individuals capable of drawing out a master corps' powers. Oh! All Renans must take part in the selection process and accept an acceptance of the position is mandatory. It is not allowed for those deemed suitable to decline. Furthermore, in the event that an acting lord is incapacitated and can no longer serve in their position, a replacement must be quickly prepared. Okay. Unique Adjustment Index Test Subject Report. Okay, I was wondering what that was, because we didn't really find out what that was. Following is a report on the second successful case of Sovereign Test Subject Experimentation. Volron, I, okay, got it. Yeah, given name Volron, okay. Although subject possesses high latent potential, it exhibits significant mental instability along with strong distaste for following orders. As such, the risks uh, it poses surpass even those of the last successful subject, itself a failure, and is therefore under consideration for disposal. Addendum. This is the first successful case in 300 years. Uh, previously mentioned risk factors are now mitigated due to established pr uh, control protocols. Subject is to be evaluated under the assumption that Plan 2 will proceed and will be dispatched to Dana under the guise of serving as a lord. Ah, so they did kill the Water Lord. They had him killed so Volron could take over. That makes sense in a fucked up way. Master Cores and Spirit Cores, huh? Master Cores are instruments of power containing astral energy that belong to one of the six uh, elements. Five of those Master Cores, those with Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, and Light, are loaned to Renan Lords at the time of the Crown Contest. Only the Dark Master Core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renis Alma is ready to be reformed, uh, its existence kept top, top secret. Underneath the Master Core's spherical outer layer is a force field uh, crystal used for the purpose of astral energy containment and stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state. For the duration of their tenure, each lord com uh, competes in the crown contest to amass their allotted type of astral energy. In the event of an emergency, each lord may be allowed to withdraw from their respective stock of astral energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. The number one, design flaws have been discovered in how the Renis Alma materializes. Be advised that Master Corps, be advised that active Master Corps may resonate with other Master Corps located in close proximity and become unstable. Due to successful regeneration of the Renis Alma, Master Corps will cease to be deployed and the Crown Contest will be permanently halted. Oh, that this is just a new update. Holy shit. Spirit Corps are end terminals used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in a biological subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass uh, astral energy generated from physical activity, which is then emitted from the host body itself. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, the host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that Danans must be employed to harvest astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in producing them, it is advised the spirit cores be retrieved from host bodies and reused upon their death. Oh. Spirit cores can also be embedded in Zoogles uh, to control them via astral arts. Addendum. Increased physical load on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final confirmation of ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death for maximum astral energy yields is still pending. Okay. So that's why they torture people, because it actually, you know, gets them what they want, which is super fucked up, but, you know, I mean, what do you expect from these people by this point?
Oh, sedative mask. The device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts their mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medical applications are also recognized, particularly as a means of preventing patients uh, from sustaining mental trauma. However, doing so is not recommended, as prolonged use of the, of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. I'm guessing memory loss is one of them. Addendum. Due to the loss of production facilities incurred from the partial destruction of Letigus, additional devices will no longer be manufactured. Oh. Well, that's... We know what his mask was now. Uh, brainwashing report. After receiving reports of a robust new form of rule emerging from Dana's Water Realm, a study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. The system is unique in that it elevates only the Lord as the supreme authority while relegating both Renan's and Danon's alike to enslavement. Test subject number 10105 uh, serves as the realm's current Lord and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rather, it is done by sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness at population control, monitoring, situation will, uh, monitoring of the situation will continue. Then I'm one, collapse of cognitive facilities via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear is proven to be key in this style of rule. Once the subject loses its autonomy, they become desensitized to fear and subsequently cease to prioritize even their own personal safety. So he didn't use special magic or anything. He literally was just so horrible to them that they felt that there was no way out. Basically, he broke their spirits is what he did. Though such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers, it remains an effective way to uh, uh, cultivate disposable infantry and slaves for manual labor. Then two soldiers in Lenegas who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure classified sectors as a trial. That makes sense. The results will be monitored. Okay. That's certainly fucked up. Lenigus itself. A large-scale astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental uh, composition of Dana's astral energy and transmits it to Rena. That's what we figured out already. Activation and control of astral energy conservation is achieved by placing the Sovereign Maiden and Renis Alma within the central core of Lenigus. It is a... It is a comprised, it should be, it is comprised of classified and essential personnel uh, resident zones around a large conduit, along with a defensive layer surrounding it. The outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central uh, conduit while simultaneously functioning as the stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deployment of the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, because this only takes place during the final stage of the spirit channeling ceremony, no contingency plan to address said damage is needed. Oh god. Till the next phase, Lenigus serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the crown contest on Dana. Warning, any personnel with level 3 uh, authority or lower is, restricted, uh, is strictly forbidden from the classified zone, and violators will be immediately executed. Alright. Detachable Harvester. Oh, that must be what the wedges are. A massive spirit vessel placed on Dana for the spirit channeling ceremony. It serves as uh, the tip of Lenigus's conduit from which it separates. Upon landing in Dana waters, it extends two sets of uh, conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect uh, to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface of Dana. Once activated, it links to the biological spirit vessels placed in each realm. Ah. Effectively harvesting the planet's astral energy and mass. The accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via Lenicus. Because construction and adjustment take place in the Forbidden Zone's regulated area, Lenicus's outer layer must be deployed prior to launch. Intended to function semi-autonomously, only maintenance personnel are expected to manually interface with it when necessary. No other personnel is required for it to function. I mean, that makes sense. That's how they designed it. Dendum. De Detachable Harvester 1 was lost on Dana uh, after exploding due to the rampancy exhibited by the Sovereign. 
Hmm, addendum two, detachable Harvester 2's landing point will remain the same as the previous model. This is due to the explosion of, of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling easier connection to the center of Dana. Okay. Well, that's all the information. Holy shit, that was, I mean, it was a huge exposition and info dump, but damn, that's a lot of info to get. Yeah, I remember seeing this place before. Hmm. See a lot of numbers. Looks like logs of alignments between subjects and Lenigus proper. Okay. And this is the room he and Naori were in. Unchanged over three centuries. It's like time itself has stopped here. Oh, here we go again. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... Well, I mean, like, she says that, but at the same time, she didn't know that it seems like a sovereign only exists from a Danon, which would mean that, well, well, they, at least they said that, because I know that they said Volron did, and is Volron actually Renan or Danon? It's hard to tell now. The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Naori. Oh, man. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. Ah. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? Oh, wow. And worse. Long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But... Uh, if I don't head back, Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... Doing this will grant you even the slightest chance. I have to try. I hope it's enough. So his chances of survival were incredibly slim. Holy shit. Please, live for me, Alfin. That vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. 
more than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me, and made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. Yeah. Shit. Heavy three. I like three. It's not tasty. Oh, there's nothing in here. Damn. Oh well. If all these plants and vials, it's weird. Ah, the sound of that door opening is creepy. And this is where this place. We've seen this in one of Naori's memories. It's where the spirit channeling thing is supposed to go happen. After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin. But there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. Oh. <gasps> Naori. What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No, it's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. It's like a message she <sighs> left behind. What we did back then. Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. Hmm. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Yes, but why? Linked to Lenicus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of Oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alfin lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lanigus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. Ah, I see. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. 
Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. With the Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. Oh! That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well. Oh. Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... Naori. <sighs> that message just now, was it directly from Naori? Or was it the Danon voice speaking through her? I think it was from her. Whoa! It changed our clothes. What? These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. So you're saying this is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. New sword, too. And they appeared now because... Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden. Knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her Thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? Sounds like it. It makes sense. After all, Master Kors and <clears throat> Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, it would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? Absolutely! We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. However, the spirit channeling ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. We should take care not to be too optimistic. Good call, Dodo. See, like, this is why I love Dodo. Is like, Dodo's like, yes, this is great. Let's be mindful of bad things, though, because we don't want to fuck this up. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. Hell yeah! I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Oh. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril. It's selfish of me, I know, but... But still... Oh. No, it isn't! 
You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Exactly. That's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Aori entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well placed. Hmm. Starting with a little game called Hunt the Renis Alma. Indeed. Yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. Ah! <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? Little bit. How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. Hell yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Naori. Oh, That was nice. So Naori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. I'm so sorry, Xion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony and Naori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone, I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No, the truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack, ah! embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself. And finally know what they were like. When we save the day, she's going to be a very touchy-feely person, and I am not upset about that. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? Yes! I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. Oh, uh, understandable. What if it doesn't work out in the end, and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Yeah, this is a Tales game. Typically, these things work out. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live... <sighs> A normal life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah, you're right. It's such a strange feeling. I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead, and it's for my sake, so I can live. You're worth fighting for. Oh! I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting for as long as it takes until our future is finally in our hands. Yes. Oh, wow. La latest Maiden. Oh. Ooh, revitalize. Ooh, restores all allies HP. Oh, that'd be nice. Sode Arthalis. A sword given to the Chosen Sovereign that draws out all the latent powers so as to carry out the spirit channeling ceremony. Ooh, new armor too. Ceremonial garb for the sovereign. Cool. Oh, that's cool. New picture in the background. Oh, sorry. I gotta change. Um. Yeah, I, lo I love the new outfit. Love the new outfit. We're gonna definitely gonna keep that. That's a cool new sword that he's got. It goes with his whole ensemble. I like this, though. This is also really fucking cool. Oh, God. Sword made with Lenigus technology. Okay. And then pro uh, Protoblade Alma. That's what I uh, got for DLC. Oh, see? Oh, God. I think that one kind of, like, serves it even better than this. Like, personally? Maybe I'll switch to this in a little while, but we'll keep the regular-looking one for, for at least a bit. Okay. Feathered headpiece, huh? 
I miss the long ponytail. Not gonna deny. I miss the long ponytail. But that also... Oh, wow. That looks so good on her. Uh, the woman with no walls. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less from the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah. It was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. Indeed. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The ones separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah. I think you may be right about- You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way. Showing us what we can aspire to. Hmm, cool. Let's see, where did we come from is the question. Oh, that's the wrong button. Okay. We're going this away. This outfit's really fucking cool, actually. I really like it. Ah, I always love when the... I love when there's flappers. I love when you turn and these things, like, move like that. That's so fucking cool. I know I'm such a nerd, but I love it. Quite some door, all right. This might finally be it. The heart of the beast. We'll find the Renis Alma and the Red Woman inside, right? Probably. After everything we've been through to get here, they damn well better be. <laughs> we'll probably be needing you to open this one for us, Sovereign. Go for it, Alfin. This is it, guys. Time to see what secrets are in store. Ah, the depths of the Forbidden Zone. Hmm, I have touched the mysterious power in preparation for this battle. Oh my god. Wait, those look thorny. This looks like the thorns! Ah, oh, shit! We're a long way from the residential quarters now. It looks completely different. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this place... It reminds me more of being back inside the Wedge. Except the Danon astral energy feels even stronger here. In a portion of the city reserved purely for the Renan Sovereign. Maybe he just has strange tastes? Hmm, <laughs> doubt it. This place looks like it has been here for quite some time now. If its design were a matter of personal preference, we would be talking from centuries ago. Or perhaps even further back. Still, this isn't the sort of decadence of taste spoken of in artistic circles. So what is it then? Hold up, decadence? Artistic circles? <laughs> when a preference is indulged to its extreme, it descends into kitsch, eccentricity for the sake of it. I'd be happy to illuminate you further. I would. That depends. Does it involve you buying me lunch? The void that art fills isn't the stomach. It's the soul. I love how the girls are like, why is this happening? Like, and like, all I could think is just like, why are our men so stupid? Like, they're good people, but God, are they stupid. In that case, I'll let you know the next time my soul starts to rumble. Now all we need is something to fill up the void inside your head. Shut up! Ha ha ha! Ah, goddamn. So good. 
Mm. Big cutscene, huh? Volron! He really was still alive. And there's the Renes Alma. Then, is this another spirit channeling ceremony? Wait, though. Something doesn't seem right here. Yeah. Once more, the powers must be united. Born from the fires of chaos, the world does seek its rightful state. All must be sacrificed in the heart of Rena. What? The shrine of the true sovereign. The shrine of the true what sovereign? Has to him? He's lost himself. Reduced to a mere cog in a machine. <laughs> hey, look! Over there! Isn't that the Maiden's Crest? Can it be that this entire chamber is meant to act as a substitute for the Maiden? See, that would make sense because they said that the spirit channeling ceremony, like, like the wedge and everything only happens when that's going on, so fuck. It looks like it's still running, but are we already too late to stop the ceremony? If that's what caused Lenegus' transformation, then the purpose of the ceremony must have been to drain all the astral energy out of Dana. Yeah. But for what purpose? What could possibly need astral energy on that sort of scale? I don't know. But whatever it is, I'll bet it's connected to those visions of oblivion. Regardless, we cannot stand by and let them steal Dana's energy. That said, we should retrieve the Renes Alma. Because right now, we need that most of all. Right. It's a good thing you didn't accidentally destroy it. He's not going to lunge at us out of nowhere, right? He might. The time law. The red woman. She's back. So we finally found you. I have a lot of questions for you. Wait. What? Oh. They all have the same face. How is that even possible? So there's a bunch of them. I knew it. I mean, I called that. Wait. Oh, fuck. What is this? Who the hell are they? It can't be. Are they even people? I don't think so. It's hard to know for sure, but I think they're the true rulers of Rena. Yeah, I would say so. Feeling particularly talkative. It's no use, Elfin. If we don't fight, we may as well be sitting ducks here. Good point. Let's stop them before this gets out of hand. Dragon Swarm! What? Oh boy! Oh my god, they are not to be fucked with. Oh boy! My god, they are powerful. Honestly, like, they wouldn't be that difficult alone. It's the fact that it's all three of them together. Whoa, shit! They are not to be fucked with. Oh, my god. Here we go! There we go! Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck off! Oh, okay, healing circle. Goody, goody. Okay. Oh, they all have the same health bar. Okay. I was like... I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, like, like, like. Yeah! Scarlet Inferno! 
There we go. Okay, that was good. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh! Oh, yes. Heal, 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 please. Thank you. We are close! And. BAM! Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck off! Damn it! Here we go, I'm back! Oh shit. The good news, it doesn't matter which one we hit, because they all take the same damage! Fuck you! Oh no! Don't do that. Stop doing that. Whoa! Fuck! That was bad! We've almost got him! Let's do it, Xion! Fuck off! We got him! Oh shit! Surrender! Fighting is useless now! Do you think it's really over? No. energy. Watch out! They've got something up their sleeve! <laughs> it exploded! What? It's self-destructed? Helfen! I'm okay. Just a little roughed up. You had me worried there. Who said you could touch that? Oh, great. We woke him up. Damn it. He's awake. Hmm. I should have thought as much. So you know this place? Naturally, it was built for me after all. What? We'll save that for another time. More pressing is how I'm going to tear you apart. Even after all this time, you still insist on hating me? You cut me down. Sovereign or not, you will pay for that. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> You're obviously bluffing. You can't even move right now. Really, is that what you think? Oh, no. Did you really think that such a petty device could hold me? Are you going to claim it's because you're a ruler? Be it sovereigns or lords. In the end, they're all titles given by someone else. Plus, what kind of ruler would spend all his time chasing Alf, who happens to be another sovereign? Idle prattle. I proved my worth and the sovereign's powers were granted to me. Were they really? We already know the title of Sovereign doesn't denote royalty. It is but an overblown codename for those with a designated part to play in these proceedings. You mentioned before that you were not the only one stolen from Dana, correct? Yeah. There were countless. And every one of them besides me... died. All of those failed experiments and they still kept going back to Dana. There must have been some vital reason their subject had to specifically be a Danon. Then there were the records we found in the library, for you and Volron. They were locked 300 years apart, and yet the data they took from you was exactly the same. Which leads us to a single conclusion. Then you mean, Boron was kidnapped just like Alfin? But then he became a... A slave from Dana. Just like us. Isn't that right, Volron? Hmm. 
So he posed as a Renan and caused all that suffering to his own people? How could you? If you knew the pain of being a slave, why would you inflict that upon others? Hmm. Renan and Dan are meaningless distinctions. He and everyone else. That is all that matters. Yeah, not surprised on that one. I will stand above all others and take what is rightfully mine, starting with this. Oh, that's not gonna end well for him. <laughs> A red woman? Another one? Give your master back on Rena this message. No one makes a fool of me. Let them know I'll make them suffer. Oh, that can't be good. Don't do it! Oh no! Too late. We can't stay here. We need to go. Help it. I doubt that's gonna kill him. He'll come back. He survived being stabbed by the blazing sword. He'll be back. Shion! Why are they heart shaped? Why is that? Jump for it, best girl. He's got you. You're not alone anymore. Off, full run. Go, but no, I will be your shadow no matter where you try to run. Let's go. Never forget, I am the one who devours everything. Who answers to neither spirit nor man? My word is law! I am... I am... Blood. Oh! Are you two okay? Maybe he's not gonna come yeah. back! We'll be fine. Is Volron... Have we finally seen the last of him? We can but hope. Yeah. I doubt it, though. Those red women... What the heck was their deal? Could they be the ones behind all this? The same ones who put those soldiers and Faria in a trance? What? Those brainless things? <sighs> Either way, they've done a runner with the Renis Alma. Damn it, that's the second time now! Whatever's stolen from us, we'll steal it back. Yeah! The future's ours to protect. And right now, those things are what's standing in our way. We can head them off at Rena. Hmm! Did you say Rena? Rena, yeah! Volron mentioned a master of theirs holed up in the motherland somewhere. If that monstrous forms their true identity, I shudder to think who they take orders from. Yeah. Yeah. There's a good chance it's not human. That's for sure. Yeah. So this thing over on Rena, that's what's really behind all this, huh? They have the Rena Salma in their grasp already, so it's unlikely they'll have cause to return to Dana. I agree that Rena's our best shot. And we're agreed. Let's head back to the starship. Hmm. But seriously, I was not expecting Voron to actually be here. He seemed to care not one whit about Brennan's or Danon's. Yeah, and not in a good way like with us. Yeah, use himself above everyone else, you know. I didn't see that coming about Voron. As for those red women, to think they were monsters all along. Yeah. Tell me about it. One minute they look perfectly human. Next, uh, 
Uh, the giant dark pool of eyes doesn't seem to suggest human to me. Then you know they're not actually human at all. They definitely weren't Renan or Danon. I'm not even sure language would get through to them. So what were they then? Human Zoogle hybrids? Is the most terrifying thing anyone said all day. <laughs> it's true though. How about you, Xion? Dohali? You ever seen anything like that before? No, never. However, if they're the same as the red woman we've seen with Volron, I think it's safe for us to assume they understand our language at the very least. I had just so much I wanted to ask them. About Rena and Xion's thorns. Unfortunately, they blew themselves up before we got the chance. Why would they do such a thing, though? To take us with them? Or in order to keep something hidden? Both sound plausible to my ears. They took off with the Renis Alma too, remember? Yeah, they did. And the next time we meet them, we're going to make sure they tell us everything they know. So I can't fast travel right now. I tried, so we're gonna have to manually run all the way back. Um, I'll let you know. Like, obviously, I'll show it if something happens. But if nothing happens, I'll uh, I'll just get back to the entrance and we'll see what's uh, what's going down. Oh, well, there's another mysterious power here. Probably just from like the boss fight before. They always come back, and they're always in the same area right before. Like, you know, you like right. They're always in the area right before boss fights and everything. Even after the boss fights happen, they just come back, which is. Interesting. Also, something I, I forgot to mention earlier, um, like when it was happening, because I was kind of caught up in the moment. When Shion, like, leapt and, like, you know, um, Alfin grabbed her, like, you know, he held her hand and everything afterwards. No sense of pain on him. He, he is, like, you know, like, you know, like, he, like, you know, in other times, like, since then, he has, like, you know, like, shown, like, oh, God, this hurts, but in that moment, no, nothing. He did it with, and he didn't feel any pain in there. He willed it away, and I love that. I think it's great. Your reflexes will not serve you well here. Holy shit, I just took out three enemies with a single incineration wave. Whoo! Oh my god, this incineration wave technique is so powerful. I expect you'll be in high demand if that's the case. Oh yes. Also, something I've... Guys, I've been holding this in for a while. I've been holding in this joke for a long time. So, I'm just gonna say it now and just get it out of my system, okay? We are on a quest. A noble quest, if you will. We are on a quest to rid Best Girl of her thorns so that we can have sex with her without any problems. There! I said it! Okay? I'm sorry, future Brandon! Actually, no, I'm not! No, no, shut up, future Brandon! You don't get to make fun of me for this one! There is nothing wrong with wanting Alfin and Xion to make all kinds of babies without pain happening at the same time! Well, I mean, Xion will definitely be in pain if she gives birth, but that's not the point. The point is that I want this for them, and you will not take it away from me! And YOU WILL NOT TAKE THIS AWAY FROM ME! Thank you, future Brandon. Thank you, future Brandon. Appreciate that. I do. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I never said that I wasn't. Nighttime. What the? When did it get pitch dark all of a sudden? The lights are all out. Think it has something to do with the explosion back in the Forbidden Zone? Probably. Do? Oh, Faria! You two. Oh no. Faria, Avakir. Thank goodness you're safe. Avakir filled me in about everything. About how I ambushed you all. You did. She doesn't remember a thing. So she really was being controlled. He told me about Tarnigan, too. Is it true? 
What difference does it make? What's done is done. Stop casting me off just for one. Faria, not now. It can wait. Dohalim, Lenegas is in grave peril. So I can see. It's the city's core reactor. It's damaged. Some of the basic systems we've managed to keep online, but complete restoration still a way off. You're an elite technician, though. You can fix it, right? If so, then what's the problem? Panic's begun to set in among the citizens. Until now, whenever something like this happened, the Sovereign would issue a decree. But this time, not so much as a peep. Any longer, and we run the risk of riots breaking out before we can get things back up and running. Oh, shit. Forget the Sovereign. I doubt you'll be hearing from him anytime soon. What's that supposed to mean? Do you know something I don't? Suffice it to say, the Sovereign isn't the kind of ruler we thought he was. That is, if he ever even existed, which is looking doubtful at this stage. Are you out of your mind? Why, if people knew that a lord such as yourself was whispering such blasphemy, they'd... There's no time to explain now. It sounds like we need to find a way to keep Lenegas from spiraling out of control. We need to stop that riot. But how do we do that? We have a sovereign, technically. I don't know if that's the best idea, but it's an idea! Riots feed on discontent and unrest, right? So if we want to keep the peace, we just need to put people's minds at ease. At ease? Like by letting them hear directly from someone they trust. That's it. Who's the highest ranking person in Lenegas right now? Dohalim! Lenegas wouldn't have a next in line. After all, you said the Sovereign rules over everyone directly, right? Correct. The closest thing to an authority figure would be a lord. And the only one left is... Ah. Very well, then. Yeah, I love how he's just now figuring this out! Avakir, you mentioned a few facilities were still online. Which ones? Uh, why hasn't the Sovereign said anything? Please, won't somebody explain what's going on? Is it over? What's going to happen to all of us? Heed me now, fellow Renans of Lanagus. It is I, Lord Dohalim Ilkaris of Elder Menencia. Look up there, it's Lord Dohalim! Hold on! He should be in the crown contest! Shouldn't he? Why isn't the Sovereign talking to us? The Sovereign is seeing to other matters right now. In my capacity as Lord, I speak to you in his stead. You're afraid. As people so often are when faced with the unknown. I hope you'll allow me to put your fears to rest. The city's core reactor has experienced a malfunction. However, we have our top engineers attending to the matter, and things will soon be back to normal. I know that you feel abandoned, perhaps more scared and alone than ever before. But I ask you all to keep one thing in mind. You are Lanagus, not the Lords and Sovereign. The solidarity of its citizens is the mortar that holds it together. If we don't allow ourselves to be distracted by our differences, if we put our hearts and minds together and stand as one, I am confident we will find new hope. I would be honored to stand with you. Not as a person of loftier rank, but as another human being among many. I hope that you'll lend me your strength, for if we can persevere as one, I know a bright tomorrow awaits. Hey, we have power back! That definitely would get people's attention. Your speech seems to have done the trick. Looks like the city won't be descending into chaos after all. I only pray the relief will tide the city over for the time being. What you said earlier, about the Sovereign possibly not even existing, was it true? It's still too premature to say with any certainty, but I believe so. This whole time, this world we've been fed was a lie. 
built on nothing but falsehoods. But it can't all have been... I can believe it. After everything I saw in the Forbidden Zone, what they did to Faria, it's the only explanation that makes sense. But what about hierarchy, Avakir? Authority? The very foundations of Renan society? How can we live without someone to guide us? I'd say we found someone capable of doing just that, wouldn't you? Y you You can't be serious. I have business I must take care of first. But once everything is over, I shall return. But not as your sovereign, nor as a leader the likes of which the people here are used to, I think. But... how else do you propose to rule? I'm not sure yet. All I have is a feeling that here in Lenigus, a new dawn is on the verge of breaking. Yeah! Especially with you One as leader! People won't be judged by birthright or on the power of their astral arts, but on other things. More important things. Things like... Oh, I don't know. Musical talent, for example. When I bumped into you after all those years, I said you were no different. But I was wrong. Truth is, you were always different. I feel like... Like, maybe now I can finally begin to accept Turnigan's death. To see a future. <laughs> you go finish whatever it is you've got to do. I'll hold down the fort here in Lenigus till you get back. Thank you. That was nice. I guess you're not going to make it to Menencia for the foreseeable future, huh? Indeed. Forgive me. The people of Elder Menencia can look after themselves just fine. It's the ones here on Lenigus who need someone to guide them. Indeed. Besides, with you leading the people here, it'll help spread the idea of coexistence beyond Menencia's borders that much faster. Indeed. Ah, oh, I love it. Sounds like you're in it for the long haul. How could I not be? after the second chance that I've been granted. From this day forth, I shall dedicate myself to the future inhabitants of this world. That's dough for ya! Though the memories of the departed shall remain forever in my heart. Yeah, Dodo! You're going to be leading the people here, not ruling them. True enough. Whatever would I do without you, Kisara? With or without her, I suspect you're gonna have your hands full when the time comes. We should be heading back to the ship. Business on Rena awaits. Indeed. I still want them to hook up now. I want everyone in the party to hook up. Renan leader. Oh, nice. What new skill did he get? Ground Dasher! Oh my god! That is a skill from the, like, you know, from Tales of Eternia 2 that has been my favorite ever since the beginning. Oh my god. Oh my god, I need this. Looks like the people of Lenigus can rest easy. I couldn't have done it without your words of encouragement, Law. Hey, you're the one who made the speech. I think everybody can share the credit here. Indeed. In one sense, when all is said and done, perhaps I have been a slave this whole time, too. You, a Renan lord. How do you figure that exactly? I was complicit in the Renan system, bound by its values. Resigned to being swept along, without the resolve to take a stand. And when I realized the severity of my mistake, all I longed for was punishment. A lord. And yet my first instinct was to place my fate in the hands of others. I think I can relate. I couldn't stand watching my people bow and scrape their way through life. I didn't know what else I could do about it either. The ability to think for yourself and be your own master. That's what separates a slave from a free person. At least, that's what Law's dad Zephyr used to say. Zephyr taught me how to fight. But in doing so, he also taught me how to live. Even if it means stumbling along the way. If it's on a road of our own choosing, free of regret. Why, that's the road of freedom. Or, to put it another way, so long as his heart is compromised, 
Even the loftiest of kings is no freer than a slave. I think I finally understand now. This Zephyr character sounds like he was a wise man indeed. I only wish I could have met him. There's just... so much I wish I could ask him, especially now. I wonder, have I been correctly carrying on the torch that he passed to me? I don't think it really matters. I think what I, I think the more important thing is that you want to carry on his legacy and you want to strive to do the things that he taught you were important. How long have you known? Known what? About the darkness I carry inside me. You seem to have been aware of it for quite some time now. Why ask me now? What does it matter? But yes, I have. I've pretty much known that something was gnawing at you ever since we left Menencia. So basically since the very start of our journey then. Just when I thought I couldn't feel more ashamed. Leave the past where it belongs. We have no need for it now. You're forging ahead. That's what matters. If my brother could see you, he'd be proud. Indeed. <laughs> not as proud as he would be of his sister, I'm sure. Well then, just as well it's not a competition, huh? <laughs> Leaving the nest. <sighs> Kisara? Anyone at home in there? <laughs> Sorry. Did I look distracted? Among other things. To be entirely honest, I couldn't tell whether you were smiling or frowning. You were thinking about Dohalim, weren't you? <laughs> that obvious, huh? I was just thinking how good it is to see him moving forward at last. It was always so infuriating, knowing how capable he could be if he just put his mind to it. A prisoner trapped in a cage of his own self-doubt. But now, he's finally beginning to spread his wings. I'm happy for him. So, then why do you look so sad? Oh, I don't know if I'd say sad. There's a bittersweetness to it, I guess. It's good and... strange, knowing that he won't be needing me anymore. He will need you! He will always need you! God damn it, Kisara! It probably sounds weird, doesn't it? I have this massive worry off my mind. I should be jumping up and down for joy, right? Must be that maternal instinct of yours at work. Renwell's right. You're like a mother bird, finally letting go as her child takes his first shaking and nervous flight from the nest. A pretty big child. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. I wouldn't like to see Dohalim's face if he heard you say that. All this has made me realize I can't allow myself to become a prisoner of my own making like he was. If Dohalim can forge his own path ahead, then I can too. I won't be left behind. Oh, that's great. Uh, so I'm going to go back and get into a fight real quick because I want to see what Ground Dasher looks like right the fuck now. Spirits within the soil. Awaken and wreak havoc. Raging Cascade. Masterful Oh, fuck. Yes, that is exactly what I expected to see. Okay. Looks like we got them all. That was really fucking cool. Oh, just like literally watching the spell, like, you know, just like it, it, it just, it, it's like a perfect, like, new, like, it's like a perfect recreation of like what it used to be. Um, hmm. I don't think I'll be able what to. What do you say we check back in on the ranch? Eh, that's probably a good idea. We're going to manage it from Lenigus. Why not? Why, why the fuck not? Ooh. Oh, that's a nice looking gun. Oh, that's a nice looking gun I likes. This is the only fast travel spot in Lenigus. I have to manually run all the way back to the starship now. Damn it. I, I do like the fact that because Alfin got like, he got like a set of like, you know, black armor, he got a black sword, and now he's got a set of white armor and he's got a white sword. I really like it. It's really cool. You know, something I didn't think about before, like, we came out here and there was no power. And my, and like, I, I didn't even think of this until then. I'm just like, we're, I'm just like, okay, so we just gotta get the generators online. Why would people, why would people riot? Oh, right, we're in space! Oh, shit, without generators, we have no oxygen! We have no gravity! We have nothing! Why didn't I think of that before? There is my ship. There is my ship. That is my ship. I 
thought we'd find answers on Lenigus, but we just ended up finding more questions. Well, we got some answers, though. You can say that again. And now we have more problems to fix, too. Like figuring out how to reform Lenigus. That can wait for now. We've got more than enough on our plates to deal with as it is. Like figuring out who's really running the show on Rena. Yeah. Which is why we're going to the Renan homeworld. All the answers we've been looking for are on that planet. The person responsible for all this. The Red Woman and the Renis Alma. The answers have to be there. Are we prepared to finally find them? So, what do we do first when we get there? We know nothing about the Renan homeworld or what we might face once we arrive. We should get a feel for how things are on the ground before we take any serious steps. It's also entirely possible that the first thing we're going to face is an attack. That's true. If we come across a capital, we should- <laughs> What? Oh shit! They now see us as a threat! Oh no! just happened our course has been altered the coordinates are pointing to a different destination what's that the ship's controls aren't accepting my commands the engine is being shut down that's bad right that means we die in here quite bad we've lost control of the ship is all of this the red women's doing yes who else? Are they trying to finish us off before we can land? I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Everyone, look there. <sighs> what? Whoa. There is no planet. Oh, no. Oh, bad. Yours? What in the fuck is that? It's a flower? Serena isn't even a planet anymore. Okay. What the fuck is going on? A flower blooming out of Rena? But that flower looks like it's absorbing all of Dennis' energy. And it appears Lenigus is serving as a conduit for that energy to reach here. Could that have been its true purpose all along? Yes! If that's true, do you think the people back on Lenigus are all right? 
We can only pray that they are. They wanted Damn us to it. see this. Have they taken enough already? When is this going to end? The flower of oblivion. With everything that's happening, we need to get back to Lenigus. Is the ship still offline? Unfortunately, yes. Even more so than when it laid dormant. Can you fix it? Starships are extremely complex machines. One wrong move while we're out here in space could very well cost us our lives. Yeah. So what? We're just stuck inside here floating around? For how long? <sighs> I don't believe this. We've made it all this way, and now we're stuck here? We're watching Dana die before our eyes, and we have no choice but to sit here and starve to death? Law, calm down. You're not the only one who's worried here. Right. Sorry. It's still too early to give up. There has to be a way to get out of this. Alfin. Ah! Now what? The starship, it... it's back online? No, this is different. Something is pulling our ship in towards it. Yeah, but what is it? Like a second Lenigus! We managed to get moving, but where are we? It looks like Lenigus in here. Do you think we might run into more Renans here? Or those red women? Perhaps. Someone brought us here. The question is, who? We haven't been ambushed, so that probably means they aren't hostile. I don't know about that. Still, why would anyone want to bring us here? Uh, hey, Shion! If they wanted to attack us, they could have done so while we were back on the starship. We should see where this path takes us. Right. Out of reach. Ah, uh, Shion, just in the nick of time. Here, lend me a hand while I... No! What the... Oh, right. The thorns. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I overreacted. Again, Law? Can't you even go a minute without putting your foot in your mouth? Seriously, it's fine. I'd rather that than people feeling like they're walking on eggshells around me. Besides, I'm the one who should be vigilant about not touching you guys, not the other way around. Actually, I've been meaning to ask. Not being able to touch people. Does it ever get lonely sometimes? Okay, you just told Law not to put his foot in his mouth. And then look what you do, Rinwell! I guess I never really thought about it in those terms. It was either accept it for what it was or come undone. Before long, it was just part of my everyday reality. I think I even forgot there was another way to live. Which isn't to say I didn't feel alone. I did. Always. So numb to your reality, you couldn't even recognize it as loneliness? I don't know how you managed. It's fine. I know I'm not alone anymore. But I can't even touch you. No way of lending you a shoulder when you're down. Even Alfin. I appreciate the concern. Until I get rid of these thorns. I guess I'll have to put up with it just a little longer, but not forever. Alfin promised me that. Maybe it'll be soon, maybe it won't be. But either way, the day will come. And I'll be ready when it does. Hey. Yeah, just hang in there. One day, we'll share a big warm hug. You'll see. I promise. Hey. Lightening the mood. <laughs> What the? Are you 
out of your mind? This isn't the time for games, Rinwell. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to resist with you looking all jittery like that? It's called experiencing feelings appropriate to the situation. <laughs> try it sometime. <laughs> yeah, but seeing you act all nervous, you're making me start to feel nervous too. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Staying alert is important, but too much caution can cloud your judgment. Try to strike a balance. Law usually does, honestly. Either way, oh, that was the wrong button. We are definitely at time for this episode. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't know where we are. The summoning. Look around the area. This is. This place is called the summoning. That's interesting. But either way, thank you everybody so much for watching. I appreciate you being here with me. Oh my god! I am loving everything about this game. I am loving everything that, like, all, all the new developments that just happened and everything. I am super, super fucking pumped to, like, see, like, what this new place is. And, like, yeah, like, we're, like, you know, I, I know that we're definitely going to be getting up to higher levels and everything. And, like, you know, at some point I'm going to go back to um, Dana to take care of, like, those, like, you know, level 66 areas for, like, those side quests. But, I mean, like... It feels weird that, like, it's taking so long. I mean, but either either way, like, maybe that's just me. Either way, thanks again, everybody. And as always, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe it if you are not ready. Ring that bell for all them notifications is. And until next time, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers. <laughs>